What's up adventurers and welcome back to our channel. Um, today we're gonna explore the beautiful city of Tivat. But before we start the video, make sure to like it and subscribe to our channel. Right now we're in a park called Veliki Gradski, which means large town park. Uh, we figured that we'd come in here and check it out uh, because it's probably a good hub uh, or a base to kind of explore the town of Tivat. Uh, we literally just got off the bus around the corner from here. We grabbed a quick cup of coffee and now we came here to the center, or what we think is the center, uh, Veliki Gradsky Park. So this is the park itself. Um, it is pretty large, but in terms of like central city parks, it's uh, it's pretty small. I think Tivat itself is its own kind of uh, municipality other than Kotor. So you have Kotor and then you have Tivat. I hope I can pop up a map here and show you guys of where exactly we are. But we're gonna use this as kind of our central base here to explore the town of Tivat today. And we're gonna go and see what this town has to offer. So this is the third town that we've uh, visited so far since we've arrived in Montenegro six days ago. This is actually our last day here in Montenegro. Um, tomorrow we're going to Albania. So that's going to be an interesting experience where we started off in Croatia or we started off in Germany technically. So we started our little travel experience in Germany and then we made our way down to Croatia. Now we're in Montenegro and then we're going to end up in Albania and then we're going to see where we go from there. We're going to be in Albania for maybe a month or so. So going to be spending some time checking out Albania. It's a pretty large country, so we have a lot to explore there. But uh, as I was saying, this is our third spot, the third town that we visited. We've done Kotor, that's where we're staying. We were done Parast, that's the, the last video before this one. And now we're in Tivat. So we're definitely going to have to do somewhat of a comparison between the three towns. So far, personally, my favorite spot is Kotor. Um, it just has the most charm and it's the most beautiful, I think, in terms of looks and things to do and affordability, cost-wise. But uh, let's go explore Tivat now. Um, we're, we still have, we have absolutely no idea where we are. We're just, we keep checking Google Maps to see where we are, but hopefully we can find something of some interest. Oh, and a key point as well. We brought the drone with us and we were thinking, oh yeah, we're going to take some nice drone shots of Tivat. But Tivat Airport is very close to here. So unfortunately, it's a no-fly zone because we don't want to crash an airplane while we're flying our drone. Uh, not like our drone can go 30,000 feet, but I think it interferes with whatever's happening with the airplane signals. So yeah, that's a little bit sad. We won't have any drone shots for this video, but hopefully we can make this vlog interesting for you guys. Let's do it. We got the bus <clears throat> here to Tivat from Kotor. Um, it took us about an hour uh, from Kotor to come here. It's only because the roads here in Montenegro are very narrow. Uh, apart from these ones here, the, the roads that you'll see more inland, they're much more drivable and accessible. But the road that we took with our bus to come here was a tiny little road that was situated just next to the sea so and the bus is large and all of these cars full of tourists are coming the opposite way trying to get into into Kotor and we're trying to leave Kotor to go to Tivat so we were stuck in a crazy amount of, of traffic and we were trying to avoid all of the cars and stuff like that as well so just expect long bus journeys and expect it to be incredibly difficult as well to understand which direction to take buses in. That would be a major key tip from both of us uh, when you do come to Montenegro because something we've seen is people literally just stand on the side of the road, stick their hand out and the bus stops. 
it doesn't it's not even a bus stop like you i like i could just be standing here right now on the side of the road and i just stick my hand out and uh, a bus will stop if there's one going by and i wanted to stop the bus will just stop and then you get on and you take the bus uh, in that direction that you're going so very interesting very weird system uh, there isn't really any system to be honest it's just basically stop I want to get on. We just had a look there at the tourist information center to see what sort of attractions they have here in Tivat. And to be honest, <laughs> not much, but nonetheless, we're gonna try and pack this video full of interesting pointers about this little uh, place. Right now, we're looking for some comida, something to eat. Um, we think that we spotted a mall shopping center just up ahead so we're gonna go and check that out see if there's something in there we're looking for specifically a pecara which means bakery um, I'm so multilingual right now Wow. but yeah we're gonna go and get something to eat and check back in then we assumed that this was a shopping center but in fact it's the city hall of Tavat. so uh, we won't be going in there for food but luckily uh, Naomi spotted across the street we have a Pekara Davidovic which looks pretty damn tasty so just literally across here let's go get something to eat Pekara Davidovic uh, don't go there that's if you're watching this video and you are visiting Tavat, we just walked in and we just met the two rudest <laughs> girls in this country, I'd say, because they were just looking at us with blank stares, speaking in whatever, Serbian, and eh, don't go there. Uh, we just had to leave immediately because we didn't feel welcome at all. So yeah. it's weird for such a touristy place. The, literally the first negative experience with Montenegrinians in general I don't know I was just trying to stand there and like pick what we're gonna eat and they were just like zvolite, zvolite, like you know several times how can I help you what do you want like in, in that kind of way and I was saying sorry I don't understand what you're saying um, and they just kept on you know pushing for us to order something so we were just like all right let's let's go and see if we can get something somewhere else because that was not the nicest way of communicating yeah it was a weird weird experience uh so don't go there that's the first little pointer of this video i guess we're gonna go look for somewhere else to grab a bite to eat um we're not short on options thankfully so let's see where we end up well overall um tivat doesn't seem to be very accommodating for tourists unless you're staying in one of the like 800 euro per night hotels um, we tried to find a bakery, literally couldn't, like we found one and they were not super duper nice. And then we kind of walked around and tried to see um, what else is around here. And it's not that much to be honest. So now we made our way here to the a burger restaurant. Thank God, we're finally able to get some breakfast. And um, both got a chicken burger, so let's see what that's like. Another pretty disappointing experience. We went to a burger restaurant called The Big Bite and we sat down, we were looking at the menu. And we were like, oh yeah, this, this doesn't look too bad. We're just gonna grab a quick a burger. I was looking at the beef burger and then the guy comes out and he's like, yeah, we only have chicken. We were like, okay, uh, we'll, get, we'll get two chicken burgers then. So that was fine. We got two chicken burgers and a pink lemonade and uh, Coke Zero came to just under 16 euro um, which in terms of Montenegro prices it's pretty expensive like very expensive actually and the burger wasn't that great to be honest it was a decently sized burger but wasn't very tasty uh, the service was incredibly bad as well it took I got the burger before I got my Coke Zero, so. But anyways, listen, that's just a specific restaurant. The bakery we went to before as well was horrible. Um, the overall feeling 
that we get here in Tivat is not positive. It's very kind of, I don't know, superficial, I guess. Yeah. Kind of uh, materialistic, weird kind of draining vibe. It's really hot as well. Like it's like 34 degrees Celsius here today, but overall, so far, we would both agree uh, do not visit Tivat yeah. in Montenegro. We actually met a French guy, oh sorry, <laughs> we actually met a French guy in Biograd and he was saying to us before, um, like, why do you want to go to Montenegro? Because he just came from Montenegro and went to Croatia, so he went the other way. And he said uh, all the people are very negative and it's a very draining place and we, we didn't agree with him so far because we thought Kotor and Taras were both super nice. But here in Tivat, uh, unfortunately, we both agree with his opinion. So, uh, yeah, like it's the first place, you know, when you arrive in your new city and you're just like, yeah, that's not, it's not the city for us. Obviously, there might be people that will enjoy Tivat, but it's just not the place to be for us, I guess, so yeah. far. Unfortunately, uh, we, we, we don't like speaking negatively about areas, especially when we're brand new to the area. Um, Obviously, anybody that anybody that's watching this that goes to Tivat on a yearly basis for their holiday or something, you're probably going to disagree with what we're saying. But what we're what we both tend to look for is places that are a little bit on the quieter side, that are a little bit inexpensive, and that are relatively undiscovered. And we to be honest and friendly locals and friendly people yeah <laughs> just overall generally um a good vibe like but um me being from ireland and naomi being from germany neither of us really ever hear of people going on holidays to montenegro and that's something that we kept in mind when we were planning this trip to montenegro um so we thought we thought that Montenegro was still relatively um, unexplored and untouched in some way. And that's what we came to Tivat uh, thinking as well. But unfortunately, it's just hyper-focused on expensive hotels, uh, expensive restaurants and expensive unfriendly bakeries. Um, so. <laughs> To be honest, so far, this is a very negative uh, review experience for Tivat. Obviously, as Naomi was saying, some people are going to have different experiences. Everybody, the thing with travel is it's, it's very um, objective. It depends on, the, it depends on the person, so. Subjective. Subjective, sorry. <laughs> Jesus, very subjective. Um, it depends on who you are, so. If you're someone that just wants to sit in a hotel with a nice uh, swimming pool and kick back and not do much, then 100% um, come and check Tivat out. Uh, you have very nice views. There's nice buildings, like as you can see here, um, relatively well built, um, but if you're looking for adventure, exploration, nature, um, no, this is not the not the place. Um, so we are actually we've only been here now for like a little bit over one hour. Uh, yeah, two hours. Near, coming up to two hours, and we're already thinking about how we can how we can escape. So we're gonna go and try uh, and find the bus to get back to Kotor. Um, so the, the key takeaway, I think, from this video is go to Kotor. <laughs> Just to give you uh, guys an idea of the difference, the contrast, between Kotor and Tivat. 
On the very first day that we arrived in Qatar, we were hungry because we just spent like eight hours traveling um, and sitting on buses. So when we arrived to our accommodation in Qatar, we literally just took our bags off and then we went into the old town to have a look around. And we were hungry, so we actually went to a burger place um, and the place was called Delicious Burger. It's actually just around the corner from where our accommodation is. Oh, you have a kitten. Oh, no. oh, oh. Very scared. But uh, <laughs> the burger place that we went to was called Delicious Burger in Couture and I got a burger, a cheeseburger, which, which was like a double cheeseburger, huge burger. Naomi got a chicken burger. We both got fries and we both got drinks as well. So we got a lot more food than what we just had. Um, and it came to eight euro. I think it was eight euro and 20 cents or something like that. But we just had two chicken burgers, Coke Zero and a pink lemonade here in Tabat. And it was 18 euro and uh, something like that. It was just, sorry, 1580. So just under 16 euro, which is, it's double the price. The way Tivat is built, it's kind of built around this park here that we're in, which we started the video off in. Um, Veliki Gradsky is the name of the park itself. Um, and then outside of the park, you have the, the central area. And the central area is basically just built up for tourists. So in that regard, there's not much to truly experience that's any different from any other Mediterranean holiday experience. Like, why would you pick here instead of the south of Spain? Why would you pick the south of Spain over the south of France? There's obviously little differences there, depending on what you what you like. But this just kind of feels like your standard Mediterranean town where people come, they drink a lot of alcohol and they get sunburned. <laughs> uh, so on that note, we're going to end the video here. Uh, we are Nalu Adventures. The next video that you see from us is going to be in... Albania. Yes, we're going to be in Albania next. So that's where you're going to see us in the next video. We're going to be in Tirana. So that's exciting. We're going to be getting the bus there tomorrow. So make sure to like this video. Make sure to drop a comment down below on what you think of our experience in Tabat. And if you've been here, drop down your experience as well. And make sure to subscribe. Bye. Bye, guys.